I'm driving the all new fifth generation 2023 Lexus RX, the brand's most popular vehicle and has been for a long time. You know they took it seriously. Let's get to it. All companies have products that define them. For McDonald's, it's the Big Mac. Apple has the iPhone. Hot Wheels is Mattel's biggest driver. At Lexus, the RX crossover wears the halo. Its LS sedan is the reason Toyota's luxury division first stood tall against BMW, Cadillac, and Mercedes. But the RX is the cash cow that built the Lexus brand. Visit any upscale neighborhood and there's practically one in every other garage. This is the all new fifth generation. The press are the first people to drive these cars. My team has not been in them. Marketing has not been in them. They literally got off of a boat to the port on like Thursday last week and came here. Your first chance to see one in person comes in late 2022. It gets some of the same cues as NX and LX. Letters replace the logo on the rump. The new user interface is quite the conversationalist. You can say yes or go now to start navigation or cancel to exit. And of course, the spindle grill. There are two versions of the big beak. Lexus executives call the RX the franchise. It's incredibly important to the brand. Back in 1998, when it debuted, it literally created the premium crossover segment in the US and instantly became the brand's best-selling vehicle. And that's been the case ever since. They sell at least 100,000 copies a year. So you know they're not gonna mess this up. I'm at a Lexus event near Santa Barbara, California, where the first three models are available to drive. At this posting, Lexus has not announced any pricing. I'll put it in the description when it drops. Model lineup is pretty simple. We're launching with the RX350 Gas, the RX350H Hybrid, and then the RX500H F Sport Performance all-wheel drive. There's a plug-in hybrid too. Lexus had no details on when it will hit the US market or what its pure electric range will be. I'm focusing on the 500H F Sport Performance, which can easily be IT'd by this, but spotter's guide. There's also smoked trim, black calipers, and black F Sport badges as well. Standard F Sports wear white ones. Dimensions have been pretty well maintained. Wheelbase is slightly longer. The vehicle is slightly wider, slightly lower, but the overall length has stayed the same. Now, a lot of this is in part to putting it on the GA, Global Architecture, K platform. The 350 is a gas 2.4 turbo. It is paired with an eight-speed automatic transmission with 275 horsepower and 317 pound-feet of torque, over a 50-pound increase from current gen. That comes optional with front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, depending on the model. Secondly, we have the RX350H, that is our hybrid. Now that vehicle is paired with a 2.5 liter four cylinder with a fourth gen hybrid system and an ECVT. That is 100% E4 all wheel drive. 500H's 2.4 liter turbo four cylinder and electric motors combined for 366 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque. That's 91 horses more than the 350. The 500H is truly the performance vehicle of our lineup. Like, I cannot emphasize that enough. Everything we've done to it says performance for the RX. It has the new Direct 4 all-wheel drive, which is the most uh, precise and powerful all-wheel drive system we've had for a hybrid. This is also the first time we've had a turbo hybrid in the RX lineup. The 500H gets a more powerful rear motor with a dedicated inverter to run the rear wheels. The nickel metal hydride battery is under the rear seat. There's a six speed transmission. I'm so, so on the action of the electric shift lever. These are not delivering simulated gear shifts, they're real. 500H F Sport performance is strictly all wheel drive, just like the 350H. The 500 gets larger front ventilated disc brakes and unique steering. Dynamic rear steering, essentially for those that are not familiar, at slow speeds, the vehicles will turn in the counter direction in the rear as the front, giving a tighter turning radius by four degrees. At faster speeds, for example, on the dynamic driving course, the rear wheels will turn in line with the front wheels, giving better handling. 
There are the expected drive modes and a custom setting where the powertrain, steering, and variable adaptive dampers can be set up to your liking. This is not just F Sport trim, it really has performance goodness. The head up display is large and clear. It can be customized and controlled with this. Just brushing it calls up different options. I like this setup. It should come as no surprise that the 500H here is the Performance RX. Lexus says that the 350s, both the gas and hybrid, do the 0 to 60 dash in the mid to low 7 second range. The 500H, 5.9, so it's definitely quicker. Comparing the two hybrid RXs, the 500H has a much more powerful rear motor, so it gives it a rear drive dynamic. And if you put your foot into it, don't know if you can hear that, but there's a nice growl coming up. It is pumped in, but still, it sounds good. It's not just a throaty gas engine note. The active sound control has a little synthesized electric tone mixed in. It works, this being a hybrid. Yeah, there is a little bit of engine snarl when you drop the throttle, but this is a Lexus, so you know it's going to be quiet. And you can tell this is just a little bit more hushed than the outgoing model, and that one was no slouch. Lexus engineers have dialed down the suspension float on all of its cars for a more controlled, unified dynamic, so even in the base RX models, there's more crispness to the driving feel. F Sport performance, even better. This is not a sports car. It's a fairly good-sized SUV crossover, and yet steering remains pretty accurate and controlled. It's a little bit on the lighter side. Now, Lexus has firmed up the suspension across the board on the RX, and this, the 500H, is even firmer. Still, it's comfortable and sporty, a good balance. Enthusiasts will still find Porsche Cayenne and Alfa Romeo Stelvio the clear winners when it comes to slicing up winding roads. Lexus knows its buyers, and the RX splits its demographic 50-50, male-female. It's both a vehicle and a diplomat. Fuel economy. Uh, there's quite a difference between the RX models. If you're talking about the 350 gas-only model, the estimated average is 25 miles per gallon. Move up to the 350H hybrid, and it's 36 mpg, so that's a big difference. This one, the 500H, 27 miles per gallon. And Lexus specifies premium fuel on all RXs. The suite of electronic safety tech has been upped to Lexus Safety System 3.0. The adaptive cruise and lane keeping feels more secure. Pedestrian and bicyclist detection is improved in low light situations. RX is now available with Traffic Jam Assist. I would love to demonstrate it, but I can't find any traffic out here. Under 25 miles an hour, it will take care of steering, braking, and acceleration, making your life easier. That's what Lexus is all about, right? It uses a camera to make sure you're paying attention to the road. With a tow prep package, some RX models can tow up to 3,500 pounds. This particular car has rear wheel steering. For those of you who do a lot of U-turns, this is worth its weight in gold. Easy, nicely done. If you want that steering, you're gonna be going with the 500H. The interior gets the biggest change. Materials are quite good, you know, Lexus grade. There are five colorways to choose from across the lineup. Embossed Ultra Suede in the F Sport Performance is a unique touch, not loads of piano black. I didn't have tons of time with this, but I did get up at 6 a.m. to shoot the cabin and found the ambient lighting isn't as dramatic as Mercedes GLC and BMW X3. Releases are push button. The doors won't open if sensors detect oncoming bikes or cars. Don't worry, there's an override feature by doing this. The biggest improvement in here? The loathsome Lexus trackpad is gone. The new interface with 9 or this 14-inch display places a lot of the controls in touch zones that are a bit hard to read. There are dedicated knobs for the HVAC and sound system volume. I'll take this opportunity to say the high-end Mark Levinson system is excellent. This interface was developed by Toyota, not a third party, largely here in the United States. 
It doesn't really have a home screen. It relies heavily on voice commands, natural ones, using the prompt, Hey Lexus, I need to go to Costco. I found Costco wholesale. Would you like to go now? It's a little early. I don't think it opens till like nine o'clock or 10. This is cloud-based. There's a subscription charge after three years. There's an offline mode in data dead zones. Phone as key is available. Wireless charging is standard on most models. Good when using wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, since I find using those really drain the phone's battery. Amazon and Apple Music is integrated. No need for a phone. The 500HF Sport Performance comes standard with a toasty wheel, plus heated and vented seats. These are moderately bolstered and fitted with leather and grippy ultra suede. There are the usual places to stash all of your stuff. They're finished well. The center console is good for both people up front. Nice touch there. And there are different holes in the roof. This is the panoramic glass. I'm at an event and, you know, Evil Twin can't travel after that incident with the TSA. So in case you're new to these videos, I'm five foot nine. And with this set to a comfortable driving position for me, there's loads of room back here. Of course there is. This is an RX. That much headroom, knee, leg and foot room, very generous. Cushions are high enough so that thigh support is excellent. And the door openings big enough so that car seats go in and out. No sweat. Door pockets, pretty good size. The kids can squirrel things away. A little surprised there aren't built-in sunshades. Both seat backs get pockets, nice touch. Adjustable vents, separate climate zone, and ports to charge your phone. Also, Lexus says that heated and vented seats will be available back here. The center spine, not too intrusive, so foot room is pretty good. And FYI, Lexus says that the L version with three rows is not going to be produced, at least for now. So this is strictly a five-seater, and you can put three adults back here. They'll be comfortable around town. Two going cross-country, really nice. As far as design goes, Lexus knows it's got a good thing going and isn't going to screw it up. We didn't want to go that far away from RX because our current customers love it. So you don't want to change too much on it because you want to keep those buyers coming back. But we also want to bring new buyers in. So there are some traditional key marks that we haven't changed. For example, the floating roof. That is specific to RX and we've just continued to maintain it. Clearly, the lines of the fourth generation can be seen, though Gen 5 is a softer, kinder looking RX. Both spindle grills lose the heavy metallic frame of the outgoing model. The grill patterns blend into the fascia for less of an angry robot vibe. The hard, arbitrary crease down the flanks is dramatically smoother now. Tail lamps are tied together visually to give the rear a more confident, planted look. My favorite RX design remains the first one, for what that's worth. Back in the day, it was a spiffed up Japanese market Toyota Harrier. These days, Harrier is sold in the US as the Toyota Venza, worth looking at if you want to spend less. A shout out to the paint team, Copper Crest looks terrific. So did Nori Green and Grecian Water Blue. Nice to see it's not all shades of black, silver, and gray. I never do the TP trunk test when I'm at events because the logistics are really bad. Plus, I'm shooting this at 6.45 in the morning, so it's not open. Premium vehicles should have things like power ports and bag hooks. Lexus delivers even an available 120 volt household outlet if you tailgate much. I've griped about spare tires being a thing of the past. My deepest thanks to the product planners. Seats up, there's over 38 cubic feet to take on an estimated seven Tumi carry-on suitcases. For scale, I have a camera bag and a good-sized backpack full of gear. At this writing, there are no specification numbers for seat down volume, but since the space is deep, the remote releases are appreciated. No trip to the rear doors to drop them. I'll guess this is around 72 cubic feet, and for owners that often hit the slopes, skis and boards don't need to be roof racked. That keeps wind noise way down. Well, that's my initial look at the Lexus RX 500H F Sport Performance. With limited seat time, I'll still do red light, green light. Green lights. The RX faithful can breathe a sigh of relief that their go-to crossover is familiar, but improved inside and out. The design is less cluttered and looks more planted and purposeful. 
With four different powertrains, eventually, and multiple trim levels, there's a practical RX model for just about anyone, in the upper income brackets, that is. All models get better driving dynamics, the 500H being the most fun, but still very livable. Yellow lights? I get why the design isn't significantly different. Easy for me to say, it might be too cautious. Love the idea of the 500H F Sport performance model. Imagine if Lexus committed to V Blackwing levels of fun. The new Lexus interface is a big improvement. I find the screen a little cluttered and hard to read. Don't stop with the over the air updates. Red lights, uh, nothing big. Buying premium fuel is an expense that adds up. Few buyers took the L model, but buying a three row Lexus now means stepping up big time to LX. The best selling gas only 350s powertrain is not as Lexus smooth as the hybrid models. And I point that out because the Lexus crew says the 350's take rate should be a whopping 70% of RX sales. The 350H hybrid should snag 20%, only 10% for the 500H F Sport performance. I suggest driving the 350 and 350H to compare the smoothness, but current owners will be right at home, whichever they buy. So should the fifth generation Lexus RX be on your shopping list? Yeah, of course it should be. For starters, vehicles in this segment are not cheap. You'd be wise to cross shop as many as possible to make sure you get the vehicle that's right for you. And secondly, it's an RX. It literally created the segment. There's a reason why people buy these. They're pretty good. It created the segment and still outsells the closest competitor by a significant margin. So yeah, the RX is more of the same. The franchise is a winning formula that should keep Lexus on top for the foreseeable future. Interesting that Lexus says that the competitors to the RX are Acura MDX, BMW X5, Mercedes GLE, and Volvo XC90, all of those are three row machines. Going forward, RX is strictly two rows. So I'd cross shop this with X3, GLC, RDX, XC60, plus the very good Genesis GV70 and 80. Let me just say at these events, we have very little time. And I had all sorts of technical problems. Lots of hum from my microphone. Lexus executives call the RX the franchise. It's incredibly important. And that's after I found out that my main wireless mic, that's very, very expensive, just gave up completely with loads of static. is excellent, and door openings are big enough so that it parses in and out. Welcome to my world. Lexus had one plug-in hybrid model to drive, but when I finally got to it, the pack was drained and I was seriously behind because of those tech issues. So I'm going to wait and do a separate story on it once it comes to the US. Full disclosure, this being an event, Lexus flew me in, put me up and fed me good food. My opinions remain my own because you deserve it. I had to use the Lexus running footage because we drove alone, so I can't shoot it myself in that case. And I'll point out my quotes service. Buying a car is hard these days. There's still a shortage. So be smart. Use any buying service to help save time and money. Costco, cars.com, okay? Many are free. Using mine helps to support this channel. That and super thanks on YouTube. You folks are all great about supporting me. Much appreciated. Hope you got something out of my quick look at the fifth generation Lexus RX. This being the end, it's time for the fun fact. Did you know that RX actually means something? It's not just arbitrary letters. Back when the first generation was being drawn up, the designers used what's called radiant design. And so RX stands for radiant crossover. Get it? Radiant crossover. Not prescription. No. It is the prescription for profits, though, when it comes to Lexus, though. Very, very popular vehicle. Well, thanks for watching. Remember, subscribe to this channel, click notifications, follow me on Twitter. You can leave a question there or you can leave it in the comments. I'll try to get back to you. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.